Hey guys, this is a quick tutorial on how I made this animated contour map. The two programs you're going to need are Adobe Illustrator and After Effects. This comes as a request from Danny9634 on YouTube. Starting off in Illustrator, we are going to draw out our actual contour map here. Um, it's easiest to use the pen tool and just draw it by hand. And you're going to want to make sure that each one of the contour line layers are on their own separate layers as well. This will become important when we import it into After Effects. So now what I'm going to do is just going to uh, control C, click on the new layer I just created, control V. Okay, now that we have this drawn out, we made sure that these are all on separate layers. Make sure that none of these actually have a fill at all, and you can just double check by selecting them, going up here to the fill under appearance, and then just clicking none. Uh, they do need a stroke, and I find it most effective between one and two, but you can go thicker if you want to. But you go ahead and control S to save this to your computer. There's no need to export. We want it to stay as an Illustrator document. Now that we're in After Effects, we're going to go over here to the project file. And we'll just right click, import file. Find our Illustrator document, contour lines, and just go ahead and import that. And we want to make sure we're importing it as a composition. And the footage dimensions is document size. We'll have two new files here. One is a folder that has the Illustrator layers. And the other one is a composition. And we'll just double click on the composition to open this up. What you might see is a black screen at first, but that's okay. You can just go down right here to the uh, transparency grid and you can just turn that on. And now we can see what we're working with. First thing we're gonna do is select all four of these layers, right click, create shapes from vector layer. This turns these vector lines into outlines for After Effects. And you can go ahead and actually delete the original Illustrator layers out of your timeline if you want. You don't need them anymore. Next thing we're going to do is for all four of these outline layers, we want to turn them into 3D objects. And that's this button right here. Turn them into 3D layers, excuse me. And that allows them to be manipulated in a 3D space. Then we're going to right click, new, and place a camera. I'm using a two node camera, but a one node does work for this as well. And we're just going to keep all these other settings and click OK. Then we're going to right click on the camera we just created, go over the camera setting, and we're going to create an orbit null. And we'll use this in just a little bit. Then to make this a little bit easier to see, I'm just going to create a background. So I'm going to make a new solid, and I'm going to set this to 1920 by 1080, as that's the dimensions of the composition. Click OK, and then just drag that to the bottom. So now the next step we're going to do is down here at the bottom of the composition window, you'll see a little button that says one view. We're just gonna change it just to two. And now this is gonna open up almost like a second camera for us to look through. And now up here on your toolbar, um, there are hotkeys for this, but I'm just gonna show them right now. There's an orbit, a pan, and a dolly. If we click one of these, we can now manipulate this camera view to kind of better see what we're working with here. At any point, if you want this window to be reset, you can just go down here to this default button and then just click reset default camera and it'll bring us right back. Now that we're in this 3D space, we want to manipulate these layers. Um, each one of these contour lines needs to be at essentially a different position in Z space, if that makes sense. So if I click on the smallest one, you'll notice we have this um, gizmo, which is the actual term for it comes up. And we're gonna go back over to the second view and I'm actually gonna rotate our camera almost 90 degrees this direction grab back our selection tool, and I'm going to grab the blue zero and drag it forward. And now you'll notice that layer is technically now being manipulated in a 3D space on the Z axis, and it's now forward more. An easier way to do this is actually to switch this view to the top view. And now we can individually see where these layers are being positioned. So I'm going to move the smallest layer forward, and I'm going to go to layer three, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to move that forward as well. Layer two, move forward, and I'm gonna keep layer one where it is because it's the base. However, I am gonna move layer th uh, two, three, and four a little bit further and just kind of position these a little bit better. Okay, so now once again, if we take our camera tool and we bring it down to our default view, we can now see we have essentially a 3D mountain. So now the next step is to make the camera tool uh, or excuse me, to make the camera do um, exactly what it does in the animation where it uh, pans around. So all we're going to do is we're going to go down here to this orbit null that we created for the camera, and we're going to press R on the keyboard to open up the rotation properties. Then at the beginning here, we're going to set a keyframe or click the stopwatch to set a keyframe for the X rotation. And then we're going to go ahead and drag ahead about one second. And we're going to bring this value up. And so now if we play this, 
the camera pans down almost like it's a 3D object. We can see this mountain. You can watch the same thing happen over on this screen here. So if I position us, if I actually move it out just a little bit, we can get a better view of what's going on. The layers themselves are not moving, but the camera is. And all it's doing is just following this null rotation that we have set. Because the camera's point of, of angle, or point of interest I should say, is focused on that null. So all we have to do is just modify its properties and the camera will follow. Now the next step is to add a little bit more of some smoothness because this is very abrupt. So what you can do is select these keyframes, right click, keyframe assistant and apply an easy ease. And now it's a little bit smoother. If you want it a little bit more, you can actually keep these keyframes selected and go into the graph editor. Go down here and choose speed graph, edit speed graph, it's this button right here. You can click individually on these keyframes and extend out these little arms. And now you can really influence the speed at which the animation plays. Cool. We are technically done with this view, so we can switch it back to one view, and now we can see this animation as a whole. Because these outlines are technically 3D layers and the camera manipulates in a 3D space, all we have to do to add text is to right click, new, and just simply create text. We can make this say whatever we want. We'll just leave that. Because the text we just created is, to, is a 2D object or a 2D layer, um, when we play it, it's not going to be influenced by the 3D camera at all. However, if we make it a 3D layer, now it moves with the camera. So all we need to do is position this how we want it. So I'm just gonna click on that text, press R. I'm gonna rotate it forward 90 degrees perfectly so it's straight up and down. I'm gonna grab it on the Y axis and move it up. And then we can go ahead and scale it if we want, just to make it a little larger. But now, we have that animation. One issue though, is I don't like how much negative space we have down here. So I'm actually gonna move the camera tool in a way that moves this whole mountain down. So we have a little bit more room. And all we need to do is go here to the camera orbit null. And we're gonna press P on our keyboard. Actually, what we're gonna do is press R first and we're gonna find where this keyframe ends, which is at the one second mark on the timeline. So now what we're gonna do is press P, press the stopwatch for position, drag the playhead all the way back to the beginning and create a keyframe as well, so we save that. And then we're gonna go back to that second keyframe and now we're gonna drag the camera down. So now, when the animation plays, the mountain technically moves down, but that looks a little weird. So all we need to do is also easy ease these keyframes. So same thing, go in keyframe assistant, go to easy ease. So now with those created, a cool trick we can do is if we go over here and press P on our keyboard to close it. Now, if we press U under the orbit null, we can see both of the properties that we are currently tracking with a keyframe. So now if we select all four of these keyframes and go into the graph editor, we can see the curve of influence on the X rotation. And now we can click on the orbit null position and also influence its curve. And this just helps so we can see a good idea of where the curve is at its sort of peak. So we can line those up and now the animation looks like this. You almost can't even tell when the camera is moving up, allowing for the mountain to be lower on the screen or more centered on the screen depending on how you have it set. Now to get that classic drawing animation, all we have to do is go down here to one of our outlines we're gonna click the down arrow and there's gonna be this little add button and we're gonna click that and add a trim paths. Click the down arrow on the trim paths, start the keyframe or excuse me, move the playhead to the first position, click the end stopwatch and drag this all the way to zero. Then move the playhead all the way to the one second mark and drag the end percentage all the way to 100. Select both keyframes, right click, keyframe assistant, easy ease, and now we have this. So what we're gonna do is actually click on this trim paths under layer four, control C to copy, go to the three other outlines and control V. Now all of them are drawing. You can go into all these outlines, press U to find where we had keyframe the trim paths for each of them. And go ahead and offset all of these keyframes by just dragging forward a little bit. 
and now when we play the animation, they all draw at different times. However, I don't want the camera to shift until the trim paths has finished drawing or is nearly finished drawing. So knowing that the trim path starts, at least on the bottom layer at the very first second of the timeline, I'm going to go ahead and close all of these again by pressing U and selecting them. I'm going to go to the camera orbit null, press U again to open up these keyframes. I'm going to drag the playhead forward until where I want the camera to start moving, which I think right about there will work for me. And then I'm going to grab all four of these keyframes and also drag them forward right to the starting spot. So now the animation looks like this. And you can mess with this a little bit more. We are almost done with this animation. However, we are missing an important blur effect, and we also don't have a bottom layer. The bottom layer is easy, because like I said, as long as the object is a 3D layer, it gets influenced by the camera. So if we create a new solid, and I want to make this 720 by 720, and it can be any color, drag it to right above the background layer, and also make it a 3D layer. And now we get something like this. But that's boring. I'm going to add an effect to it. For the blur effect in the beginning, the easiest way to do it is to create an adjustment layer, but you also can go into the camera and mess with the depth of field properties. All I'm going to do is right click, new, make an adjustment layer, and then I'm going to add a fast box blur to that adjustment layer. And I'm going to keyframe the blur radius from a high number such as 30, drag it forward a little bit, and bring it down to 0. I'm also going to press U on the keyboard again with the adjustment layer selected, and I'm going to ease these keyframes, and you get something like this. In the original animation, I had all of the layers sort of collapse on each other and then fade out. To do that, all you need to do is just move your playhead to where you want the animation to roughly start to conclude. Click all of your layers except for the very bottom one, and then press P. Click the stopwatch for position, drag your playhead forward a little bit, and then go ahead and set all of these values to zero. Then select all four of the layers, press T, which opens up your opacity, Click your stopwatch for all four of them, press U to open up the position for all of them, and drag the opacity to zero. Then drag your playhead back to where the position, the first position keyframe is, and drag that opacity all the way back up to 100 to create a keyframe there too. And now you get something like this. For the bottom layer, you can press T and do the same thing with the opacity. Don't forget to do your text as well. I'm going to select all my keyframes and go into the graph editor, and I'm going to make all of them have a little bit more of a curve to them. The last thing you're going to want to do here is go down to the motion blur and turn that on for every single layer. And here we go. That is how I made the animated contour map. And you can get very technical with this. You can make it a lot bigger, you can make it smaller, and you can do a lot more cool effects. So do play around with it. I hope this tutorial helped you.